our Earth's moon, so familiar to us and yet so mysterious. Down here near the bottom, we find what is clearly an impact crater, and probably an historically recent one. Look at this crater's immense splash trails. This splash trail travels across the entire face of the moon, about the distance from Florida to New York. This is so an impact crater. Up here is another easily identifiable impact crater, but one on Earth, well, one on the moon, is this gigantic spread of flattened, slightly depressed land. We have a name for it. We call it Mare Serenitatis, the Sea of Serenity. Exactly what is this gigantic spread as big as Iceland? And what is this spread, bigger than Europe? We call it Mare Ibrim. What about this gigantic spread area, as big as the United States? We call it Oceanus Procellarum, the Ocean of Storms. Fully one-third of the Moon's near-side surface consists of these gigantic spread areas. Let's examine them more closely. We're often told that these are impact craters. This certainly could not be so. An impact crater of this size would have blasted the Moon apart, or at a minimum gouged gigantic chunks out of the Moon. Look more closely at their size, at the lack of splash as with the true impact craters we saw moments ago. There is, in fact, no splash at all. Also notice that within these areas, there is a significant lack of craterization. There is some, but compared to the common surface, the craterization is insignificant. These areas are newer, fresher areas, more recently made, in fact, it's as if some spreading force pushed the regular surface slowly outward, pushed the old surface aside, and bunched up these surfaces along the edges of the spread's rims. Look at this bunching up. Remind you of anything? Remember the geode? As the geode grows, its outer surface spreads in advancing rings, exposing a lower tectonic surface in the exact same way. On the Moon, these bunched up areas of upper tectonic surface are the result of a growing tectonic undersurface, a spreading silicate rock surface, a new skin, fresh from the inside of the Moon, growing like a crystal geode. According to this theory, this image is the Moon about 400 million years ago. The mares exist only in their early primitive stages, much smaller. The mares will grow and expand as you watch. The spreads will grow and the moon grows up to this size. This is our present moon. For careful examination and study or scrutiny, we will go backward in time and watch the mares close down. Remember, we are reducing and enlarging only those gigantic spreads or mares. This has led to a significant and interesting problem. If we say these spreads or mares are eruptive growth from the inside of the moon, and we do, wouldn't the gravitational pull of the Earth exerted on the Earth's side of the Moon cause most, if not all, of the growth to erupt toward the Earth? In fact, wouldn't that imply that these eruptive mares should not exist on the side of the Moon which faces away from the Earth? This is what the common sense logic says, but let's see what reality says. In fact, as you can see, on this very detailed image, the far side of the moon has virtually no gigantic mares or spreads. Well, there's a suspicious candidate, but you can see it's smallest by comparison to the gigantic spreads on the Earth side of the moon. In fact, the tectonic spreads on the Earth side give the Earth side a totally different look than the far side. 